Hello and welcome to our next chapter in this Think Diffusion training. In this chapter, we'll look at how models and LoRa's can totally change the outcome of your image. Think of the model as your base checkpoint when generating your images and the LoRa as sort of a, a filter that you can drop on top of it. It's a little more advanced than that, but it's a great way of thinking about it in simple terms. Let's get started and see how changing the models and LoRa's can help you. Now, if you were with me in the last chapter, we learned how to create an image through text to image. Now we'll be looking at different models and LoRa's and how those can influence the image. You have a little drop down up here, which is the stable diffusion checkpoint or the model selector. And preloaded in Think Diffusion, you have a lot of models to think from. You can also select them from this tab here, which says checkpoints. And here you have a preview image of what that model is about. Not everyone has a preview image, as you can see here, but that's mainly to show you what the model is about, so it's not necessary. We have previously used Think Diffusion Excel a lot, which gives you this cinematic vibe with little desaturated colors compared to many of these other models out there. In my opinion, giving it a more realistic and natural look. Now, if we were to choose something different here, let's see what's available preloaded. Let's take this bottom left one here, the 3D cartoon one. So we're clicking that and then it's gonna load up here. You can also select it just from the drop down. Make sure that you go back into the generation tab. Now, once this is loading, we can input a prompt again. So let's do cat in a hat again without actually changing anything with the styles or the prompt here and just changing the size to 1024 by 1024, which is a good base for the Excel model. We're gonna generate two images here, just to have something to choose from. And now we're clicking generate here. So now we're not using the Think Diffusion Excel realistic model. Now we have more of a 3D cartoon kind of style. And this will give us this style without actually prompting for it. So the only prompt we have is cat in a hat, but we're getting this sort of style here. Now, bear in mind, you can use a base model that is not a 3D model and also prompt for this style. For example, 3D model here or something similar, but it's, a, it's an easy way to get what you're looking for without involving the prompt. Now you can take this even further by loading a LoRa on top of it. So think of it a little like a filter. Now, if we go into the LoRa tabs here, you can see there's nothing here. That's because I haven't installed any LoRa's. So you're gonna have to need to do that. We will go to a site like Civit AI, where you can find LoRa's, you can search for them. I have selected this one here, the glass sculpture. So this is a LoRa that will give you glass sculptures of what you're trying to uh, achieve. So to get this into Think Diffusion, just click the download options here. And if you right click here, and copy link address, go back into Think Diffusion, get our file browser out. We're gonna go into automatic 1111. We're gonna go into models, LoRa, and here you have a little upload button, copy paste this link here and press submit. Now Think Diffusion will automatically start to download this model for you. And as you can see, it has started here. Now, just bear in mind, this takes a uh, uh, a minute or two so don't quit this yet and you can see the the weight here we increased a little bit but it's quite a small model so if it's just a LoRa it should be fairly quick so if you press refresh here now you have the SDXL glass now it doesn't have a preview image but that is not necessary we can select that here and that will get copied into the prompt you can also do it manually by typing inside these little crocodile brackets LoRa colon and the name of the LoRa, which in this case is SDXL underscore glass, colon, and the weight, which means how much of it you want. So if you generate this again now, now we're having the cat in a hat with a 3D model and a glass sculpture LoRa loaded on top of it with a weight of one. Now, depending on the LoRa, you might or might not get the result you're looking for. So as you can see, we're still not getting any glass in this. So what you can do is either increase the weight here or you can look in the creator has written and it says here, use a glass sculpture. So this is what they have trained on, a glass sculpture 
of a cat in a hat. This will help the LoRa to activate. And if we generate now, you can clearly see that both the LoRa and the prompt is helping here now, and the cat is a glass sculpture. And it's looking pretty good in my opinion. We have two glass sculptures of a cat. Let's recreate this. If we go back and use the same seed here now and generate again, if you don't make any changes here now, we will get the same image. But if we remove the Laura here now, we still have a glass sculpture of a cat in a hat. We have an extra S here, but it doesn't matter. We're just using the same prompt without the Laura, just to show you the difference. So it's gonna try to give us a glass sculpture. But as you can see, it's not exactly the same one because the LoRa influences what we're seeing. And if we take LoRa back here and we remove glass sculpture from a cat in a hat and we increase the weight here, let's say we want a weight of two, which is fairly high, and we can generate this again. And depending on what LoRa you use, the weights can differ greatly. So a weight of one can be strong for one LoRa and weak or low for another LoRa. And as you can see in this one, this Laura needs the prompting. You can see that it is trying to make a glass sculpture, but isn't really getting there. So bear that in mind as you work with your Lauras. And if you would increase this even further, let's say you put this at five, it will most likely break the image. So you can't make the weight too high either. So try and work with the Laura and the text together and see how strong the creator has made the Laura. And as you can see in the results here, we're just getting a jarbled mess. This is not usable at all. Now let's find a different Laura here. This one, dressed animals. That's gonna be perfect for our use case of a cat in a hat. So we're again taking this, copy link address, going into Think Diffusion, dropping that link, pressing submit. And once we go into the Laura's here, press refresh, we will have our dressed animals. I'm making sure that my prompt is still a cat in a hat. I'm loading the Laura. I'm checking if they have any token words that needs to be added. It doesn't look to be the case. You can also sometimes check what prompt has been used. So in this case, they actually have dressed animals in the prompt. They have dressed animals in this prompt as well. So we're gonna try both with and without. So now we're doing dressed animals like they did in the examples. We're running cat in a hat once again two images and we still have the 3d cartoon model and as you can see all our of our cats now dressed and if we do the same exercise but with a different model let's go back to the think diffusion excel model which is a again a more realistic model and if we generate this again we should get a more realistic result of uh, the animals and as you can see we have cat in a hat but they're a little more clothed than they used to be. So in this case, they have a, this one has a sweater and this has a little uh, scarf here. And if we remove the dressed animals here and just use the Laura without the keyword, just bear in mind, we're using the same seed for everything here now. So it's gonna be an apples to apples comparison a little bit. And in this example, we can see that we're really not getting a lot of the clothes. It's a little different texture on the fur here. So make sure that you use the recommended prompt words that the author has made available. I hope you learned how to use models and Loras, and I hope I'll see you in the next chapter.